Good morning. Hope you're doing well today. We have a special video interview with Dr. Uh, John Sullivan Jr. He is the medical director here at Sarasota Medical Pregnancy Center. He's a currently practicing OBGYN specialist. He has also been uh, the chief of OBGYN um, at Sarasota Memorial Hospital, and he currently um, has a practice in advanced um, gynecology and obstetrics. And so uh, we have Dr. Sullivan, who's an expert uh, in pregnancy and delivery, obviously, uh, here with us today to talk a little bit about how the coronavirus may be affecting uh, pregnancy and, and uh, after delivery. And so, Dr. Sullivan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Blake. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take just a few moments here to um, talk through uh, just some basic questions that may people may have about uh, pregnancy or even just uh, right after uh, delivery about uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus and, and how that may affect. So my first question to you is, uh, what effect, if any, does the coronavirus have on pregnancy? Well, at this time, there's very limited data uh, as far as how it may affect the pregnancy itself. We don't know of any direct negative impact that a pregnant woman may have versus someone who is not pregnant, either to the mom or to the baby. Okay, great. Um, and if a pregnant woman was to get the coronavirus, do you at this point see any data that it would uh, directly negatively affect the baby? Again, there's limited data on this, uh, so we think we treat our coronavirus patients as if they, number one, were not pregnant, so we're going to treat them with all the same precautions that we would otherwise while she's pregnant. We don't know of any what we call vertical transmission of the virus to the baby while the mother's pregnant. There may be some limited time frame where the mother's been just recently exposed and then has a baby shortly thereafter where the baby may get that vertical transmission. Okay. But the, the good news is that uh, mothers produce antibodies against this virus, as everybody else does, who's immunocompetent, whose immune system is healthy, and that uh, those antibodies will cross the placenta to the baby passively. So babies have a passive immunity while the mother is pregnant. So if a mother should develop coronavirus while she's pregnant and not deliver immediately, then she would be passing that protective antibody to the baby throughout the remainder of the pregnancy. Oh, great, okay. And I just wanna let everyone know we are recording through uh, FaceTime right now. So if there's a delay or anything like that in the video, the reason is we are practicing our social distancing, which is one of the best preventative measures. Uh, so we are trying to be as uh, cautious and wise as possible. Um, another question for you, if uh, someone were to think that they possibly had coronavirus or were sick, what would be their next best step? Well, uh, for a pregnant mom, uh, if she thought that she might have coronavirus, just as we would tell anyone else who might uh, think that they have the disease, that they have a fever, they have a cough, they have shortness of breath. Now, many pregnant moms who I've seen over the past uh, month or so have those symptoms anyway. So they're all calling us, uh, asking us about the coronavirus. So we drilled down a little bit more specifically as to their symptoms. So if they think they may have coronavirus or they've been exposed to someone who has uh, been tested positive for coronavirus, then they need to contact their healthcare provider right away, their obstetrician right away if they are pregnant. Okay. Similarly, if they're not pregnant or there's a family member, then they need to get contact their health care provider. Okay. So you think a primary physician is the, is the first step in that then? For our, our, the pregnant patient, she should contact her obstetrician first. For everyone else, their primary physician. Great. Okay. Um, all right. Here's a great question. What is the best way? We've heard a lot of information, but I think we just want to be clear. What is the best way to prevent contracting uh, the coronavirus? Excellent question. So uh, there's a lot of um, basics out there that most everybody has on their phone or uh, can, uh, can pull up, but the prevention steps uh, found on the CDC website are the following. Number one, wash your hands frequently with soap and water, and that's a 20 second wash. You can also use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer when hand washing isn't an option. Uh, the second that the CDC recommends is if you do have to cough or sneeze, and we all do, um, 
um, cough into the into your sleeve, into the crook of your elbow, uh, shirt or tissue, but not into your hands if you can avoid it. And then after you sneeze, avoid touching your nose or your mouth or your eyes. Uh, that's uh, the second and uh, important one. The uh, third one is if you think that you're sick, uh, stay home. Don't return to work. Uh, try to minimize your uh, social interactions. Have others uh, perhaps pick things up for you. Uh, the next, the uh, fourth is clean, commonly touched surfaces. Uh, the CDC recommends both in the home and workplace bleach, ammonia, or alcohol based disinfectants. Uh, they suggest wiping down and disinfecting things like doors, light switches, refrigerator handles, TV or stereo and remote control knobs, computer keyboards, home telephones, cell phones, and other touchscreen devices. And then finally, if you do develop a cough, fever, difficulty breathing, then call your obstetrician if you're pregnant or your healthcare provider if you're not. That's great. Uh, just a quick question. Um, is, is there a preference or um, a necessity with the type of soap that we use. I've heard a lot about using antibacterial. Um, I've heard it's good and it's bad. It is just regular old soap okay and, and preferred? Regular, any soap is fine or an alcohol-based product of soap's not available, it's fine. Okay, great. So there's a lot of data in it and it's, and it's ever-changing, but when we think of common hand washing uh, to protect against the virus, a regular soap is fine. Okay, that's great. Um, so uh, next question is, uh, once the baby is born, uh, is there a lot of danger directly to the baby and the mother? Um, I think there's a little bit of anxiety about this scenario, especially going to hospitals and things like that. Um, could you speak to that, uh, maybe a little bit of fear there? Sure. So we touched on, could a mom transmit uh, the COVID-19 to her baby during pregnancy or delivery? And the risk of that is low, but there are not many published uh, case reports yet. If mothers do test positive for COVID-19, it's recommended uh, that there be a potential for mother and infant separation at the time of delivery. Okay. Uh, but again, this is changing. Uh, someone reviewing this podcast a week or two or two days from now, uh, the recommendation by the CDC may be slightly different. Again, the hospitals uh, are getting, and uh, as healthcare providers, we're getting literally a daily update from the CDC, from the Florida Department of Health. And for me personally, I deliver at Sarasota Memorial. Uh, we're getting updates daily from them as well. So the the uh, chance of spreading the COVID to your baby is low. The data is limited, but we'll be taking the appropriate precautions to prevent that. Great. So in uh, your opinion, it is okay to have the baby at the hospital? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, absolutely. That would be the recommendation, right? Not at home. Okay. Great. Um, yeah, we just don't want people to feel like that it's not safe to go, that you guys are making all the necessary precautions, especially here locally. I know with um, Sarasota Memorial, they're right on top of things and, and they have excellent quality of care. Um, okay. What, if any, information um, do you, that we may have missed, what do you think is the most important information to know right now? Well, the most important information is that this is a, a mild respiratory uh, infection for most, and especially of women and their families of childbearing age. They're at the lower risk end, as we've all heard, uh, but it doesn't mean that we should be any less cautious as far as social distancing, hand washing, things along those lines. Those are all very important things. So don't be dismissive just because you fall into an age range that doesn't seem to fit the profile. Uh, because again, uh, Florida now has become one of the hotspots uh, in the country uh, just within the past couple of days. We anticipate that that will probably continue uh, as this trend is happening and hopefully the trajectory will, will start to diminish. So the important takeaway is all those things that we talked about as far as precautions, hand washing, social distancing, calling your providers uh, if there is a challenge. Great. Uh Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to know. No, no, that, okay. that, that was it. Yeah. Um, and then finally, um, so we've dealt with people who um, know that they're pregnant currently and what they need to do, uh, those who are potentially soon to deliver, but what would your advice be to uh, someone if they, you know, just took a positive pregnancy test or think they may be pregnant uh, but don't know right now? What is their next best step um, if they think they're potentially pregnant? 
Excellent question. Well, first, at this time, there's no data to suggest holding off on getting pregnant. Uh, our hope is for those who are early pregnant at this point uh, will be beyond this pandemic by the time they're actually uh, around to delivery. If they do get exposed, as I mentioned earlier, they will develop immunity with a healthy immune system and protect their babies throughout their pregnancy. Someone who is already early pregnant, again, that will hold the same in that they're, if they are exposed, they'll develop the antibodies and do well. Uh, early pregnancies, it's important to get uh, early ultrasounds to date when the pregnancy is due. It will also help us as providers downstream uh, determine were you pregnant during this outbreak or were you not? If you were pregnant, how far along? As more and more data is collected, it would be, it would be nice to know, gee, was your exposure during the first, second, or third trimester? So getting the early ultrasound uh, it's, and seeing it care provider or a pregnancy center if they have ultrasounds available uh, would be important great um and any other advice or just comments that you'd like to make as we just end our time together today sure well important thing is for my practice personally over the past couple of weeks we've had and we're doing this at the pregnancy center as well we've had patients wait in their car until the room is ready for them to be seen so there's no our waiting we don't have a waiting room anymore it's full of toilet paper but no <laughs> but it's uh, but it's uh, we have pregnant ladies so we need that but uh, but seriously, we we uh, that social distancing even at the healthcare providers is important. Okay. And uh, for those of us who are involved with pregnancy centers, we're doing that much the same. But it is it is important for us as healthcare providers to be available because this is an essential need. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. And I know that here at uh, our pregnancy center, um, would you any recommendation about SMPC specifically? Uh, is it still okay to come here if they need to? Um, things like that. So just like the doctor's office and the Sarasota Medical Pregnancy Center is medical. And as a medical director, uh, I am uh, honored to be there with you. Uh, but call before you arrive. So much of what we're doing now uh, is telemedicine, both at the pregnancy center uh, and teleconferencing at pregnancy center, as well as in the doctor's offices. So many of the needs can be met. Uh, by telemedicine, by teleconferencing. The handful of things that we can't do um, that need an interaction, for instance, the ultrasound, uh, those are going to be kind of our limited exceptions. So we're trying to limit as much as we can uh, our direct patient to provider exposure uh, and, and hope that others will follow that lead. Great. Well, Dr. Sullivan, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're busy, and uh, there are babies being born every day, and, and you're seeing a lot of pregnant women. So thank you so much for taking just a few moments. And um, as we end today, uh, we hope that you enjoyed this. There's more information. If you have questions or concerns, please feel free to call the Pregnancy Center. Uh, we'll put the number right on the screen for you, and uh, hopefully we'll be through this soon. We love you. We appreciate you. And uh, Dr. Sullivan, thank you once again.